In this video, I'll be making a giant mallet as a commission for one of my YouTube viewers in the United States. He's a hammer collector and he said that he wanted something for his collection made by me. He suggested a carnival or strongman style mallet and I really liked that idea. Traditionally, those mallets have a metal banding around the head and I don't really have much experience working with metal, so initially I reached out to Alex Steele, who's a successful YouTuber and talented blacksmith based really close to me to see if he'd be interested in collaborating on this project and doing the metal parts. But I haven't heard back from Alec unfortunately, I'm guessing he's busy with other things. So this is just going to be a solid wood mallet. And the client suggested oak as his preference, which is a good choice because it's solid and dense. He also sent me some dimensions of the size of the mallet that he wanted. So I wrote those down on my whiteboard so that I could refer to them as the project progresses. For the head of the mallet, I'd use some oak reclaimed from a local church refurbishment. This wood is around 100 years old and has some great character, and I could make use of some of the shorter lengths for the head. I started by planing one face of each piece flat. I marked the plane face with an X so I wouldn't lose track of which surfaces I'd flattened. Then I could work on getting the edges of each piece square to the face that I'd planed. I first checked the fence was square to the table with a small square and then with the planed face pushed firmly against the fence I squared up both edges. So now I had two edges which were perfectly square to the planed face on each board. Next I chose which pieces I could laminate together to get enough width to form the head of the mallet and glued and clamped them together with the planed faces face down onto the flat surface of my bench. After leaving them for an hour or so, I scraped off the excess glue with a card scraper and then left them overnight. And then I planed down the laminated blocks, planing the already planed faces again, just to make sure that all of the pieces were flush with one another. Then I set up the planer as a thicknesser and did several passes on each piece to get the unplaned faces flattened and square. I used the miter saw to trim one end of each block and then set up a stop block so that I could cut each block to a consistent length, which was the length I wanted the mallet head to be. Here's one of the four prepared blocks ready for gluing. I glued up the pieces to form two halves of the head and I'd glue up the two halves later on after I cut the joinery for the handle. I applied some weight and left it overnight again and the following day I cut the blocks to width on the table saw and I made these cuts by taking a few passes raising the blade in between because the oak is so dense. With the two halves of the head held together I then found a centre point and marked up as big a circle as possible using my compass. Next I looked for a piece of oak to use for the handle and I had a few of these 50mm by 50mm pieces which were the upright pieces from some reclaimed hat and coat stands. These pieces had a cove on each corner so I marked up some cuts to get rid of the coves where the handle would be joined to the head. I made the rip cut on the table saw and then I did the cross cut with a pull saw and removed the rest of the material with a chisel to form the joint. And I did the same on the opposite side too. To cut the joinery on the head, I first centered the handle onto the head and used a marking knife to trace the outline. I extended those marks using a speed square onto the sides of the blocks. I used my calipers to measure the thickness of the handle and it was just over 30 millimeters. So I set the calipers to just over 15 millimeters and then scribed a line that would be the depth line for the joint. I used a pen just to make the marks more visible and then I raised the blade of my table saw to the depth line, 
I set the table saw fence so that the blade would cut within the marks I'd made with the marking knife and then made a series of cuts on the table saw to remove most of the material. I then used a chisel to clean up the joints. The handle was a fraction too wide to fit in the slot at first, so I used a hand plane to take a few shavings off the top of the handle, and then it fitted really nicely. I'd already decided that I would shape the head of the mallet using hand tools as I wanted it to look handcrafted rather than looking like something that came out of a factory. But to remove the bulk of the material I tipped my table saw blade to 45 degrees and cut the corners away which would save me a lot of work. Later on I'll be adding a spline to the top of the handle, so here I'm cutting a slot at the very end of the handle right in the centre. By rotating the workpiece by 180 degrees in between cuts I could make sure that the slot was perfectly centred. Next I did a dry fit just to check how things would go together, and at the moment the two halves of the head weren't quite meeting together. So I made some adjustments to the top of the handle with a block plane and a chisel. Then I did another dry fit and there was still a small gap so I took a little more off and then it seemed okay. Next I set up the table saw to make a 45 degree cut to remove the coves down the length of the handle on all four corners. I rounded over those 45 degree cuts with a block plane. To make the spline I'd use this piece of sapili. I first marked it up and ripped it to the right width at the table saw, and then I ripped it down to thickness so that it would be slightly too wide for the slot in the handle. I think the slot was around 3 or 4 millimeters, so I ripped this to around 5 or 6 millimeters. I cut some of the length away at the bandsaw and then checked that it was wider than the slot, and it was which was good. Then I took some more of the thickness away at the disc sander to shape it as a wedge, and then it looked like it would slot in nicely. This spline probably isn't necessary for strength because the wood glue is going to be plenty strong enough anyway, but it will help to secure the handle in place really tightly to the head, and also it's going to look cool. So now I was ready to glue and clamp everything together and it went together really nicely. Once I'd got a couple of clamps on, I added some glue to the slot and hammered in the spline. I cut off the excess with my pull saw and then added some more clamps and left it to dry overnight. Next I could start shaping the head and at the bottom I used a spoke shave, but because the handle was now fitted I also used some chisels and a block plane to work around it. I also used a card scraper just to get everything nice and smooth. For the rest of the head I mainly used my number 4 hand plane. Here you can see the spline joint being cleaned up and it looked really nice. As you can see this created a nice big pile of shavings. To clean up the ends of the head of the mallet I used my belt sander and that worked really well. I think I was using an 80 grit paper. I used a round over bit in my router to ease over the edges of the head. This left some burn marks so I came back with a sander to clean them up. 
Now that the mallet was together, at this point I wasn't too keen on how the handle looked. It was just straight and kind of boring, and also it seemed a bit too thick. So I decided to shape it a bit more using the spoke shave, smoothing it over again with a card scraper. And the final shape was slightly thicker at the bottom of the handle, thinner in the middle, and then thick again towards the head, and I thought that looked much better. Then I did some final sanding at 120 grit on the random orbit sander, and then 240 grit by hand. I decided to also add a round over to the end of the handle too, as without that it just kind of looked unfinished. I cleaned off the burn marks again by hand. And then it was time for finish, and I used boiled linseed oil, which brought out the grain really nicely. Finally, I added my maker's mark to the top of the handle near the head. That's the mallet finished. I really enjoyed this project and I'm pleased with how it turned out. I don't think there's anything that I would do differently if I were to build this again. The oak has some imperfections. You can see there's a hole here and over the other side there's a little bit of what I think might be spalting. But this is 100 year old oak so you'd expect it to have some character. I'm going to put it down now because it's pretty heavy. This project took between 15 and 16 hours to complete and now all I need to do is package this up and send it over to New Jersey in the United States. Thanks for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already and hope to see you again soon.